I'd like to call the February 5th, 2013 Brunswick County School Board meeting to order. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce Mr. Randy Rhodes, who is uh, an attorney in Leland that is filling in for Mr. Rick Green, who is out of town. So, Ms. Rhodes, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this time, I'll stand and do the invocation by Ms. Babson, and after the invocation, presentation of colors by West Brunswick High ROTC. just never happen again but Lord just just be with these little children father these precious little children and be with the parents and the family of those who lost some of their children we thank you again for all your blessings in Jesus name Amen, Amen. Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For or about first. For or Thank you, West Brunswick ROTC. Next on our agenda is our salutes. And uh, we have three tonight. <coughs> Dr. Pruden. Would the board members join me in the well, please? Is Elena Guevara present tonight? Congratulations to Elena Guevara, who has won the North Carolina Lions Club Peace Poster Contest. She will receive a $250 prize from the North Carolina Lions Club in May. Her poster was judged best by Waccamaw School, the Shalote Lions Club, and Lions District 31H before going to state level competition. Since winning the state, she will compete with 49 other students in the Lions Club National Contest. Should she win the national contest, the next step would be the international competition. Congratulations to Elena Guevara.
Ms. Jennifer Weber, Cedar Grove, please come forward. The National Science Teachers Association, the largest professional organization in the world promoting excellence and innovation in science teaching, announced that eight of the 244 science teachers chosen as fellows in the 2012-13 New Science Teacher Academy are from North Carolina. The 2012 fellows were selected on the basis of several criteria, including showing evidence of a solid science background and displaying a strong interest in growing as a professional science educator. Jenny Weber from Cedar Grove Middle School was selected from hundreds of applicants nationwide to participate in a year-long professional development program designed to promote quality science teaching and improve teachers' content knowledge. Each fellow will receive a comprehensive NSTA membership package, online mentoring with trained mentors who teach in the same discipline, and the opportunity to participate in a variety of web-based professional development, including web seminars. In addition, each fellow will receive financial support to attend and participate in the NSTA's 2013 National Conference on Science Education in San Antonio. Congratulations, Jennifer Weber of Cedar Grove Middle School. appreciate Assistant Principal Jeff Record from Cedar Grove accompanying his teacher tonight. Thank you both. And Pat Olson, please come forward. ATMC is a local company with a long, rich history of service to the people of Brunswick County. As one of Brunswick's largest locally-based businesses, ATMC employs over 200 people, the majority of whom were educated in Brunswick County schools or have children enrolled in the school system. For this reason, ATMC and its local board of directors feel that giving back to Brunswick County students is an important investment in not only the future of the area, but also the future of the company. This year, ATMC awarded $30,000 in grant funds for 18 programs intended to enhance the educational opportunities of Brunswick County students and residents. Since the start of the ATMC grant program in 2006, the cooperative has awarded grant funds totaling $325,000, with over half of that sum going to fund education programs centered on math, science, English, technology, physical education, and the arts. It is with the help of ATMC that the teachers have been able to make a difference in their classrooms. The Brunswick County Board of Education expresses their sincere appreciation to ATMC for the opportunity given to teachers to apply for these funds. Thank you, Ms. Olson. Babson, before you uh, go back. Mark Pager, will you come over, please? This is the first board meeting attended by our new Executive Director of Human Resources, Mark Pager. Mr. Pager comes to us from the Montgomery County School System uh, in Virginia, um, which is where Virginia Tech and the city of Blacksburg and other uh, cities and towns are located. And uh, we are very fortunate to have Mr. Pacer to join Brunswick County Schools. He is an accomplished human resources executive, uh, comes ready to go. All he has to do is learn the language of North Carolina, uh, and he is uh, ready to go. But he's already made great contributions to our uh, leadership team in the central office, and uh, everyone has said that they've already enjoyed knowing him and working with him. So, Mark, we're so 
happy to have you in Brunswick County. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you, sir. It. Yes, indeed. Thanks to the wonders of the internet, Mr. Pacer's family could be could have been watching from Blacksburg. <laughs> have you converted him to um, being an NC State fan yet? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, nothing next on our agenda is public address. We don't have any for tonight. Then presentations. Something that I look forward to every meeting, and that's the teacher's voice, Miss Laura Hunter, who is our Brunswick County School Teacher of the Year. Welcome. That makes me feel very special. Well, I think I'm <laughs> saying it for all of us. We yes, all actually are. look forward to your presentation did every month. You missed month. me last month? We did. <laughs> um, we are halfway through the school year, and so I thought it was a good opportunity for us to stop and take a little bit of a stock of where we are in terms of uh, the teacher's voice in Brunswick County schools right now. So um, I wanted to give you a bit of an update. Uh, I'm going to start with Teacher Advisory Council. Uh, we have uh, set out this year to create a Teacher Advisory Council to work with Dr. Pruden and his leadership team and the board um, to re reinvigorate the teacher's voice in Brunswick County <coughs> Schools. And I'm really pleased that we have made it through um, thus far. Uh, we've met um, every month from September through uh, December. We took a break in, in January and are getting back underway in February. And those meetings have been very productive. Uh, teachers feel like they have been engaged in dialogue about communication in the county, um, about leadership, uh, been able to ask critical curriculum questions, participate in um, decisions that are going to impact teachers, such as roll out a parent portal, for example. Um, uh, and it has been a, an, an opportunity for teachers to develop a leadership role for themselves in the county, which is one of the other secondary goals that I had for this particular council. Um, the teachers that are involved in Teacher Advisory Council are working, I think, really hard at their local schools to um, provide opportunities to boost staff morale and to um, empower teachers with a voice to uh, talk with members of central office and their administration um, in a problem-solving kind of way. So I've been very pleased with the way Teacher Advisory Council has played out so far this year. I hope Dr. Pruden is as well. Um, finger on the pulse of kind of where we are right now. Uh, today is the 100th day of school, in case you guys didn't take notes. Um, I know because my kindergartner in Stephanie Bomer's kindergarten class at Southport Elementary painstakingly counted out 100 <laughs> jelly beans last night, grouped into groups of 10 in individual baggies to take to school today uh, in celebration of our 100th day. So what has happened so far this year? I was very proud of him, by the way. I should have been in the class today. I would have gotten jelly beans, right? That's right. I suggested that he take pennies, but he was more interested in edible items. Um, so um, if there's been a theme this year uh, for teachers, it's been change. Uh, this has been a year of change for us. Uh, Curriculum-wise, as you know, uh, Common Core has rolled out K-12, um, and we are full steam ahead with that change. Um, and teachers, like all humans, are creatures of habit, and change is hard. Um, and teachers have felt those growing pains all year as we have moved into conversations systematically about <clears throat> improving our um, use of higher order thinking in the classroom, looking at procedures in startup and transitions in the classroom, and really making sure that our 
curriculum aligns with, uh, with Common Core in terms of 21st century skills. Um, and teachers are, are making headway. It is a work in progress, um, and I think teachers um, have embraced this idea of Common Core and, and are moving forward in, in a positive way with PLCs at their local schools. Um, in addition to Common Core, um, we have rolled out new assessments this year. Um, our high school folks just went through their first round of testing, and I'm sure you know if you talk to high school folks, there were lots of tests to be had last month at South Brunswick High School alone. My school, we, <laughs> we administered 112 different assessments mm -hmm. in the course of a week. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean 112 ones for different <laughs> courses, from VOCATs to new ESEs, to the new common exams or MSLs. And um, I have to say that there's been a great deal of anxiety associated with those tests for both students and for teachers. Because as we know, and we're moving forward in this scene, um, those tests are now gonna be tied to standard six in some particular way. And um, as we watch things unfold in the General Assembly sessions that are now in going on in Raleigh, that standard six and teacher evaluation tool might in fact be linked to tenure at some point in the future. And because of those ties, teachers are feeling some anxiety about these new assessments, how they're gonna be used, and the transparency involved in those assessments. Um, on the ground level, the biggest concern has been um, readily available data to help us inform from those assessments our instructional choices in our classroom as we seek to measure um, our place with this new curriculum. All of that is unfolding right now. Um, and once again, it's a work in progress. But teachers didn't become teachers because they were the low performing students in class. They are the A students and they want to feel like they get the A. And so test anxiety is high for teachers and they're feeling it. Um, so we are headed into the time of the year that I call the long march. This is the third quarter of the game. This is the time when people are feeling hard hit to get out there and make the play. This is the time where coaches are really important. Um, teachers are struggling in the long march. February through March is the hardest time because there are very few breaks. The weather is lousy. Uh, kids don't want to be there. Assessments are looming for the spring, and that anxiety goes up for elementary school and middle school folks with EOGs. It's a hard time of year. Um, so I would encourage members of the board, uh, members at central office, to get out to the schools and give teachers some encouragement to get through this long march because this is a hard time of year to pick yourself up and move on to the finish line. That's what I've got for you. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Okay, uh, media month in review, Dr. Pruden. Mr. Chairman and board members, uh, January was the month that North Carolina celebrated and recognized boards of education. And our board meeting in January was on the 5th, I believe it was on the, the first Tuesday right after winter break and we hadn't had just a few days of school and we didn't feel like uh, we had enough momentum to give the board uh, its due. But we've had a month of school since winter break and uh, we're running strong and so this evening uh, we want to show you something in uh, in the way of a tribute from the entire school system for your service on the board.
keeping us fed. Thank you for getting us here. For putting the world at our fingertips. Thank you. for supporting our libraries. things that's ever happened. I like that. Thank you, Dr. Cruz. Yeah, this is good. Yes. Like oh, that is. Yes. oh, thank you. She oh, gave me please. such thank a smile. You. Thank you. I was hoping you would. Yeah. <laughs> um, just to get a picture of that little girl. Mm -hmm. You remember her, don't you? The girl, little girl from yeah. Southport. Yeah, I sure do. Bergering. Yeah. Bergering. Right. She was the sweetest little yeah. thing. And we have uh, one additional item for our media month in review. Um, February is also the month that we love the bus in North Carolina. We honor our transportation system, our drivers, and the mechanics and other folks uh, that keep our buses on the road every day. So I took the opportunity for my little monthly um, blog that we put on the website to thank our transportation folks, and I'd like to show that to you. Good morning. The week of uh, February 11th through 15th is Love the Bus Week in North Carolina. And that's the week that we honor and celebrate and recognize our bus drivers and the mechanics. 
mechanics that keep the buses on the road, and all the people that help to provide transportation that gets our students to school every day and home again safely. Most superintendents keep a little toy school bus on their desk just to remind them of what a big part of their responsibility safe transportation is. And here in Brunswick County, we are very fortunate to have Bobby Taylor as our Director of Transportation. And Bobby's with me here this morning in our uh, bus garage, our transportation maintenance facility, where all of our school buses are maintained, uh, oil is changed, brakes are repaired, and the safety work is done so that each child gets a safe ride every day. Bobby, how many kids ride Brunswick County buses every day? Yes, we transport every day 7,200 students to and from school. And how many buses do we have on the road? Today we have 167 school buses that run every day. Okay, and so each one has a driver, 167 drivers. And how many folks uh, here in the maintenance department support all those buses? We have yeah, 21 uh, staff members in this department that runs this. That's a big operation. And what's the price of a gallon of fuel right now? Today, fuel costs us three dollars and twenty-three cents a gallon. And you burn about how many gallons today? Wow, we burn sixteen fifty, sixteen hundred and fifty gallons of fuel a day, and over three dollars a gallon. So you can see when we figure our annual budget, our transportation fuel costs uh, is a major factor that we always take into account. Well, we just want to share this with you uh, as we get ready to level the bus. Uh, February 11 through 15, and Bobby has one other person he wants to introduce you to. All right. Yes, I would love to introduce you to our little bus called Buster. Buster, can you come around? Can you turn around and face the young lady, Buster? And say good morning to everyone. Good morning, everyone. I'm Buster. Buster. Buster is our tool that we go out to the schools and we train the young students on how to how safe Buster is. Most people don't know it, but Buster school buses is the safe mode of transportation in the, in the United States. As you go into the schools inside where the students and they can come outside and, and do the same thing. Uh, that is so cool. Actually, uh, the guy that performs this for me or <laughs> goes out and promotes safety and just basically teaches the kids in that stall form and the lights how they work and what you're supposed to do when you're standing and waiting in line for the bus not to approach it until the stall form the lights red, turn red, and the stall form goes out. And at that point, the bus goes in tells them what they're doing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Buster also squirts water and they uh, when they take it into the schools they turn it a 360 and give everybody a little uh, <laughs> little sprinkle just to get their attention mm. is that all Dr. Pruden? yes sir thank you okay uh, moving right along approval of the meeting agenda Mr. Chairman Yes, sir, Mr. Thorson. I'd like to make a motion that we add a resolution as requested by Dr. Pruden to the agenda tonight. Which would under, be? Under action item two. two. So, Mr. Thorson, uh, making a motion to add a resolution has item number two. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Thompson. I, I would like to add an item. Um, for the board to consider to uh, for the support of the teacher of the year um, I guess Brunswick County Association of Educators program uh, but board support for teacher of the year in form of Byron? well I, I would like to Discuss present it. a motion for okay. consideration okay so that'd be item number three teacher of the year under action, under yes. action. I'm fine with that. Mr. Thompson? Is that all? Do I have a motion to uh, approve the agenda as amended? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Okay, uh, approval of minutes, January 7th, 2013, <coughs> January 8th, and January the 22nd. It's a liaison, regular board meeting, and a finance committee meeting. I have a motion? So moved. Motion by Mr. Thorson, do I have a second? Second. Ms. Cook, any discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, consent items for approval. Who will approve the consent items? Ms. Babson. Okay. Mr. Thompson, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, down to our action items. Number one, the SRO contract revised. <coughs> contract which um, added the elementary uh, part to it, elementary officers. Yes, as a follow-up to the Board of Education approving the funding for the nine additional SROs to serve the elementary schools for the remainder of this year, uh, the amendment is to amend the contract itself to include those nine officers. It just shows it in the plan. It's a one amendment. page showing the nine additional officers and one-time funding to purchase the equipment. I have a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll follow up with a similar motion as I made in committee. But yes. Okay. I'd make a motion to uh, approve the contract amendment for uh, school resource officers. I have a second. I'll yeah. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay, uh, resolution, Mr. Thorson. Yes, sir, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Pruden, who has a resolution that he'd like to read to the board members for possible approval tonight. Thank you, Mr. Thorson. Board members, um, in one of the large metropolitan areas in our state, uh, there's an unfortunate circumstance uh, between the Board of Education and the county commissioners, <coughs> such that the commissioners have petitioned the General Assembly for legislation that would allow the commissioners to take ownership of all school buildings and school property in that uh, locality. And uh, the North Carolina School Boards Association is concerned about that pending legislation because were it to pass to perhaps uh, provide a remedy for one of the 115 school divisions in the state, it would open the door for any board of commission uh, in North Carolina to do the same, uh, take ownership of all school and uh, school board property. So the North Carolina School Board Association yesterday uh, sent to all local school systems the following brief uh, resolution, which I'd like to read for your consideration. Whereas North Carolina general statutes prescribe that the powers of general control and supervision of school systems are to be vested in local boards of education not county commissioners, and whereas public school placement, design, and maintenance are integral components of the control and supervision authority that local boards of education have been statutorily assigned, and whereas to maximize efficiency and maintain <coughs> supervisory powers, local boards of education must continue to control basic powers of school property ownership and whereas, as duly elected officers, local school board members must continue to discharge their duties and responsibilities for the citizens of North Carolina. Now, therefore, <coughs> therefore, it is hereby resolved the Brunswick County Board of Education, for the reasons herein noted, opposes any proposed legislation that would authorize counties to assume control of school property and respectfully requests that the North Carolina General Assembly oppose any such legislation during its 2013 session. Do I have a motion for the resolution as presented? I make a motion that we approve the resolution. I have a motion by Ms. Babson. Do I have a second? A second. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. Everybody answer. <laughs> All right. Um, number three, uh, Teacher of the Year for Brunswick County, Mr. Thompson. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, I think we all recognize the, the value uh, that has been um, brought 
to us uh, through our Teachers of the Year, um, in particular, uh, the idea of extending the teacher's voice uh, to the board is, is something that I personally value. Um, and it occurs to me that um, the board has very little uh, to do with um, any kind of, uh, I guess, recognition formally of the Brunswick County Teacher of the Year. That has historically been, a, 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 I guess, a function of the Brunswick County Association of Educators. But I would like the board members to join me in recognizing uh, or I guess s to some degree a, a tribute to our Teacher of the Year and join the BCAE in recognition of uh, the accomplishment and the contribution of our Teachers of the Year by offering um, the Teacher of the Year uh, beginning with this year uh, a, a stipend uh, in the amount of $2,000 a year, or $2,000 for the uh, Teacher of the Year. Okay. So I'd, I'd like to, uh, to make a motion to, for the board to um, approve a $2,000 stipend to the Teacher of the Year, beginning with the current Teacher of the Year, uh, in support of the Teacher of the Year program in recognition of the contribution that the Teacher of the Year makes to the school system and to the board's relationship with its professional staff. And I'll echo that, um, but as long as this program continues like Ms. Hunter has made it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so whoever your successor may be, we would expect that same type of, of uh, commitment that she, that she has made. So with that said, I, I would second that motion. Good. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Um, discussion announcements by superintendent. We just have some calendar dates listed for you there, Mr. Chairman and board members. February committee meetings on February 19th. 19th. Uh, board of Education work session February 19th with KBR, our facilities consultant. Yes, ma'am. I just add, I was able to attend the Spotlight on Talent Friday night, I believe, at Odell Williamson, and it was phenomenal. Um, the showing of the talent, I was telling Ms. Enos earlier, it just gets better and better, and I know these students were chosen for their, um, you know, chosen out of a pool of, of students, but it was just very, very well, very well done. Uh, it was all ran smoothly as it always does at Odell Williamson Auditorium, and um, always wish it could be better attended, but it was really a wonderful showing. And uh, John Evans was the MC, as he's so gracious to do for uh, so many events at the school. And um, I know on the back we've got some different things coming up, but it was just, it's always great to see the arts and see these kids. And my favorite thing, which my children didn't understand, was the Abbott Costello Act of who's on first, and it took them a while <laughs> to figure it out, but I said, you know, that they, need, they need that. They need to learn about these things. But um, it, was, it was very good. That's great. Um, also, without the assistance and help of Odell Williamson, I mean, they're just so accommodating to, to our system. I mean, maybe we should do a salute for them soon or something. Because they, they really do go out of the way, as Miss Ennis would probably echo. But uh, And thank, thanks to you, too. I mean, your commitment to, to our kids <laughs> and the art program is just tremendous. So. Friday night, I'll see this Friday night. <laughs> And what time? 630? <coughs> okay. Okay. Chairman, I'd also like to just mention um, our extracurricular program uh, that so many of our teachers and administrators uh, give such a great deal of their time to for very small, if any, uh, stipends. I've had occasion to attend basketball games recently uh, with two of our high school teams, extremely well coached. And uh, I also attended one of our high school's military ball this past Saturday evening. And it just does uh, a person good to see young people dressed uh, in the finest manner and exhibiting grace and manners and toasting the President of the United States and uh, the Governor of North Carolina 
uh, just conducting themselves as, as adults uh, and hearing remarks from the new uh, commandant of uh, Sunny Point Station there. Uh, those kind of events just expand the world. Uh, that event was, he was held down at Sea Trail in that magnificent ballroom. And those kinds of events just expand uh, the world of opportunity for our students. But it is our uh, principals and teachers, uh, counselors, uh, who make those, those experiences possible. You're right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, do I have a motion for closed session as stated on the agenda? Second. Second. Mr. Thorson. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Take about a five minute recess. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's Hunter.